Thanks, thank you for joining us for an episode yep. Yep. of Black Friday. Uh, we gave a few clues this week about where we're going. And if you look back on our posts, you'll be able to see those. So we are getting access to the Albert Memorial Clock. And I say we because these two are joining me for this video. Say hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> they're my teammates. By the way, not to some stragglers. Just want to say a big thank you to Belfast City Council for getting this arranged. Uh, as I said, not many people have been here. I think, I'm going to say it, I think we're the first for a public video to have been taken from inside the structure. So we're going to be actually going inside the structure itself, which I've never seen inside it before other than a few renovation pictures, but I'm um, seeing pretty cool. We'll see the, the bell on top and the, the clock face and everything else. Nearly got hit by a bus there. You can probably watch where I'm going. So this impressive structure is Albert Clock. I'm sure you've probably seen it if you've been about Belfast. Um, it was built between 1865 and 1870. <laughs> the clock was built as a memorial to the Queen's consort, Queen Victoria's consort, Prince Albert, who died in 1862. So if you're there, you to the greatest big structure as a remembrance. The contract to design the structure, see that in the background, was awarded to an architect called W.J. Barr. And he actually won it as a prize. So at first, even though Barr won the contract, they actually awarded it to Lanyon and didn't give him his prize, which is a bit, bit shady. So council back then, disgrace. They eventually gave him the contract after public outcry. Um, saw for what it was, uh, Barr being cheated. And they gave him it and he designed the structure. This lake cost £2,500 to build the clock tower, which is about 191000 in 2011 money apparently, or did Google. But uh, yeah, it's a, that's, that's a bargain, if you ask me. 191000 for a full on clock tower. Good job, guys. So, this street down here, this is all Queen Square, and the street that runs down there, High Street, this was all the river parts that flowed into the lagging. And basically, this is all reclaimed land, and that's our next fact. So just like the video uh, we did in Belfast Cathedral, it was built on marshy, funny land. They thought it was a great idea at the time. I don't understand why, but it caused a lot of structural issues from day one. Uh, luckily, the 2002 renovations have remedied a lot of these, but it's still a risk for the future. So you may not be able to see it here, but there is a hill. Now it's one of the most hazardous features about the Albert Clock, but it's also one of its most daring. And it's nicknamed the Leaning Tower Belfast. You can see some amazing detailing here, and up here is Prince Albert himself, and that apparently is a life-size uh, statue of him. I don't know if it's actually his actual size or just human in general life-size. Now, if you hadn't been here pre-2002, it may not have looked so nice. Uh, a lot of restoration work had to be done because the building was essentially about to collapse, and because of the soft scrub of stone, it was quite susceptible. So just like our story from the three old spars in Belfast, um, the queues just down the street behind me. Uh, this area was filled with shipbuilding industry and trade industries to do with ships down to the river Farson. And so because of this industry, um, the sailors brought along different industries that weren't as legal such as prostitution. And up until recently, this was still a thing around this area. Um, it has cleaned up its act a little bit now. So we're here with Marty who's going to kindly show us around the clock tower. Um, how, how steep is the, the, the stairs? What was it? 108 at the top. 108 at the top? Yeah. Great. So I'm going to be able to pop this whole video there. I would say you'll be. <laughs> so we're going up these stairs here. We're inside the Albert Clock. It's really spooky actually. It's kind of like a, a ghost tower. Better turn on the, the light. Oh! Wow, um, this stairs are cool. So, on our way to the top. So, this is all Scrabble stone that it's built from. And. That was a major issue because it's quite soft material and as I said, pollution destroyed quite a lot of it. We're finally at the top. Oh, I'm so unfit. But yeah, got to go climb. Oh, we're not at the top. There's another ladder. Oh. 
everything you see inside here is original as the day it went in. Everything there. Just a couple obviously oil and grease it every now and again. Spot. Pre pretty impressive, still working though. It's still there's nothing in there. It's changed from the day and everything. That, that would have been the old way for winding the clock. <laughs> so this would have been on in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then you wind this thing here, which drew you up the big heavy weights that run right through the middle. Wind these up. Every day to wind it. Every day. Once a day for a while, or? Once a day, I would say, yeah. And you come here every week, do you, to, to general, week. Maintenance? general maintenance? Yeah. yeah. It's, the top, once a week. Yeah. Here's the mechanism. This is uh, designed by F.M. Moore, and he was based on High Street, his, his firm. Um, quite quite good for me, because my name is Moore as well, so good good lineage, obviously. Automatic now it used to be wound, as Marty told us earlier, um, but now you can see the motor itself, it actually just winds it now. Still has to be checked out again though. This last ladder here is actually going up into the clock face. You can actually see it there. So you've seen it all, seen it from the outside, but this is from the inside and we're gonna go up there now. You can see the face here, that's the front face, that's down High Street, and then this one here runs down towards Queen Square and Custom House Square. And then that one goes down Victoria Road, I think, isn't that one over there? So it's pretty cool to see what it looks like from inside. A few cracks in the, in the clock face here, so for Obviously, troubles down the years, different things, heavy rain, wind, especially can add to it, but other than that, it's perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> Your face is blocked there. <laughs> Obviously, these here um, are heated. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are heated. Oh, because what happens is, an in, in heavy heel, it can land on and jam the clap. So basically, the bell car is way up, which we're not allowed to go take. Oh. What? Do you, know, do you remember what size the bell is? No. No. <laughs> this here yep. is what's called, this strikes the hammer. This is called the hammer. This would pull down and bang the bell. Marty, put, put that, ring that bell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> answers on Google. Answer says the bell doesn't ring. Can you now quash that rumor by telling us it does? The bell, the bell does ring, but it, is, it rings it during the day sometimes. In the early hours of the morning, it doesn't go because we're so populated with people that are Yeah, the apartments and things around here. Before, so. didn't used to be. Okay. Yeah, so when is the bell due? Call past. <laughs> no, four o'clock. Four o'clock. We're not wearing that. Quarter day. past. No. <laughs> it's a privilege to be in, so thanks very much to City Council for letting us inside this. It's pretty impressive. And a really, really key part of our history. So the clock can tilt to the title uh, changes. And that's, that's a, it's a great fact to know when you've just reached the top. This is the easy bit, this is going down the stairs, let us not trip up and fall. <laughs> yeah. there, there are little slits across here, little tiny windows you can sort of see out, but the, there's no main views, that's apartments, it's off uh, Queen Square. Be careful here, but hope it gave you a bit of insight into the inside of the Albert clock. As I said, not normally, uh, people don't normally gain access to this building, so it was a privilege to be inside this. And we've got a good selfie shot today. Go that's the main width that you can see there, that obviously will then, that's how the clock mechanism works. And once it gets to that then moves up and down, basically like an old grandfather clock in your own house. Thank you very much for showing us, sir. Really appreciate it. And I think you got a great job, by the way. <laughs> See you later. That's the end of this episode. Um, I really, really hope you enjoyed it. You got a bit of an insight in what the inside of the Albert clock looks like. And I'm gonna go wash my hands in these fountains here because they're pretty, pretty gross now. So I will be uploading this full video onto YouTube probably Saturday or Sunday. So if you haven't already, hey these guys, <laughs> please subscribe to our channel for Document Belfast on YouTube. And if you have any more suggestions about what you want us to cover in future, maybe buildings you didn't think you'd get access to, then give us a shout. Um, you can email us at documentbelfast at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. But for now, see you next week. So my bonus fact for today is that during the 1980s, on New Year's Eve, people used to gather around in a circle, around the clock, and uh, smash battles off it to bring it to the year. Good example, stand out.